Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett opening up about her fight with Marjorie Taylor Greene on Capitol Hill last week. Roll tape. MAGA has historically been on social media doing the things where they're saying, oh, she's black with um, lashes and nails and hair, and so she's ghetto. And so to me, this was her buying into that rhetoric and trying to amplify this for the MAGA crowd. And so, yeah, I absolutely think that she only did it to be racist towards me. Okay, Joe Concha with me this morning. Tell me, please, Joe, how are eyelashes racist? I'm pretty sure, Stu, that fake eyelashes aren't a racial thing. You look at, like, Katy Perry, Kim Kardashian, Gwen Stefani, Lady Gaga, they all reportedly wear fake eyelashes. I have been accused <laughs> of having fake eyelashes. This is all natural, baby, right here. Uh, but look, when in doubt, the squad plays the race card from the bottom of the deck. And I'm not excusing anybody here. Marjorie Taylor Greene, just to even bring this up, yeah. we have people in Congress. Let's put it this way. We're a country with serious problems, and we need serious people to solve them. And whether it's Marjorie Taylor Greene, whether it's Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, whether it's Congresswoman Crockett here, vote them all out, I say, because they exist for clicks and likes and to get on shows on cable news just to talk about this stuff instead of inflation, crime, the border, two wars going on, education, test scores at a 30-year low. They don't care about that. They care about Me Too. The Me Too movement is look at Me Too at this point. Crockett's launching a, a T-shirt collection. Sure. They're selling it for money. I mean, what's with that? It's, again, drawing attention to herself, profiting off of this sort of thing. And by the way, Jake Tapper, Stu, is going to be moderating that Trump debate against Biden on June 27th. That's right. No pushback there whatsoever. So that's a little preview of what we're going to get from this guy who pretends to be a journalist. Okay. Next one, Joe. Over the weekend, the president suggested that he was vice president during the pandemic. Watch this. When I was vice president, things were kind of bad during the pandemic. And what happened was, Barack said to me, go to Detroit and help fix it. Well, poor Mayor, he spent more time with me than he ever thought he was going to have to. God love you. Well, now look at this for a second. As you can see, the White House edited that gaffe out of the official transcript. I didn't think much to his uh, delivery and demeanor there either. Everything about that is disturbing, Stu. And this is a thing with the White House, by the way, as far as editing these transcripts after the fact, as if no one's paying attention. I used to be in the camp, and I don't know where you were on this, that Joe Biden absolutely was going to be the nominee. And my reasoning was not so much because he has the mental acuity for the job, right, and the physical prowess for the job, but I just didn't see a bench. I didn't see somebody who could jump in there like Tom Brady behind Drew Bledsoe, Steve Young behind Joe Montana. I'll stop at the football analogies because you like the other football. Uh, but in the end, I didn't see Gavin Newsom stepping in because he would, what, make America California. And obviously Kamala Harris is polling lower than Dick Cheney, which is really hard to do as a vice president. The guy literally shot somebody in the face. So at this point, though, I think if the June debate doesn't go well, remember, no teleprompter, no script, and I don't care if CNN's doing it and they're going to talk a lot about January 6th and abortion and climate change and Trump trials. In the end, if, if Joe Biden can't survive even a friendly debate like that, then I think at the convention they have no choice but to replace Joe Biden. And Jill Biden should be stepping at this point because she sees him privately. And the way he just spoke there, and this isn't a one-off. We've been playing clips oh, like this for time. months. Oh, this is the leader of the free world, the commander-in-chief of our armed forces. We can do better. We you're, really can. You're writing a book about this, the 2024 campaign. I am, yes. Are you going to see Trump in the Bronx on Thursday? That's the plan. The, the good news about this trial is that it's bringing all these rallies that I never could attend before in a professional capacity. So I went to Wildwood. Uh, two yep. weeks ago for, for that, and now I'll be in the South Bronx as well to cover that. And if Joe Biden comes to New Jersey, because that's apparently in play now, I'll go to Joe Biden rallies as well and see the 50, 100 people that show up. I'd love to be in the Bronx for that. Uh, that. It's not Why a not? rally. You won't call it a rally. It's called it a meeting, I think. You can go. We can get a press pass for you. I think, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think about this. All right, good. Uh, Joe Concha, we'll thank you very pool. much indeed. <laughs> yeah, all you're, right. Yeah. You're all right. Thanks. See you later, mate. Thanks.